This program is rated PG. It contains themes and scenes which may not be suitable for very young audiences. Parental guidance is advised. Be advised that the views and opinions of the hosts and guests do not reflect those of the station. Welcome to Usapang Bayan. My name is George Chua, and I'm with my co-host, Rich Marquez. Tonight, we will be talking about the new administration and the future of the country in the coming next six years. We are very privileged to have in our program, South African Ambassador Martin Slaver. Good evening, sir. Welcome to the show, Mr. Ambassador. Thank you, sir. Thank you for inviting me. Well, first of all, I, 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 I know that you brought some uh, video clips for us to take a look at. So maybe we can just uh, show our viewers a little bit about South Africa. People said that what I was searching for, I'd never find. But when I got here, everyone seemed to know exactly where I should look. So I stopped searching and let the land and its people guide me. to this place looking to feel alive again and its people left me a thousand memories richer we've been very passionate about working with communities and over the last few years have started working with crafters throughout South Africa and it really has been the most enriching experience because in a way you know it's, it's very easy to talk theoretically about how um, you know you get your inspiration from heritage and culture um, but I think working with the crafters has enabled us to have a direct um, connection to culture and heritage through these amazing women who have got so many amazing craft techniques that they've learned over the years. So from beading to embroidery um, to texturing and dyeing of fabrics, all of those amazing things that I think Africa is so good at doing. So, you know, for us this has been a direct connection to culture and heritage. Obviously we've always used silhouette and we've always used um, all of the, the richness that, ex that exists on this continent um, as part of our inspiration. Well, that certainly is an interesting clip, Mr. Ambassador. You know, I've never been to South Africa, but from the way it looked like, it, does, it looks like uh, uh, you were in Europe or you could be in the United States or Australia. and. Uh, I saw that uh, there are a lot of uh, possible uh, travel opportunities or tourism opportunities like uh, the African type safaris, even high fashion, Rich, what can you say about that? So Mr. Ambassador, can you tell us a little more about what we just saw, what South Africa is all about? Certainly, you know, South Africa is quite a unique country. At the moment, we receive about 15.8 uh, million tourists 
And I think what makes South Africa attractive for a tourist is, is the fact that it is an absolutely unique destination. You know, people can experience in South Africa things that they cannot experience anywhere else in the world. You know, if you talk about safari, we have 20 national parks in South Africa, and there are, there are really, there are big parks. If you, if you take our biggest park, for example, uh, it is the size of Samar Island. So if, if this park was an island in the Philippines, <laughs> it would have been the third largest after Luzon and, and Mindanao. So you really talk about vast areas where you can see wild animals, uh, wildlife in their natural environment, and this is something that attracts people from all over the world. And then there are adventure tourism. You saw in the clip people talking about heritage tourism, and that certainly is an area where we find collaboration with the Philippines very attractive. Um, you know, heritage tourism. And you are right, you know, what you can find in South Africa is everything from a first world environment to the, the real nature, you know, day to day. Maybe we should explain to our audience that uh, when we talk about safaris, we're not talking about shooting the elephants and the rhinos. We're talking about shooting, taking photos, right? Yes. Well, in these, in these national parks, uh, there are national parks and there are also privately owned parks. In these parks, you are not allowed to shoot animals other than with a camera. That you are welcome to do. Uh -huh. There are opportunities in South Africa to hunt and a lot of people, even from the Philippines, go for to South Africa for hunting. Um, but primarily this is for viewing, for appreciating nature and, you know, taking photographs. Sir, as speaking about the tourism in South Africa, according to the South African Embassy, the number of Filipino nationals who visited South Africa during the 12 months to end of May 2016 has increased by 4.2% to 5,492 in comparison to the 2015 um, calendar year. What can you say that more Filipinos are enjoying South Africa and what are your plans to sustain this good um, tourism growth? <coughs> Tourism is one of the focus areas for our embassy, and we really want to see more people from the Philippines travel to South Africa for tourism purposes. You are right that at the moment the level is quite low. If you take into account 15.8 million tourists in total, and only about 5,000 of them come from the Philippines. So what we have done at the embassy is the following. We have decided to participate in the Travel Tour Exhibition, which is held every year in February here at the SMX uh, Convention Center in uh, Pasay City. This year, uh, we took six travel agents from the Philippines to South Africa to attend the Tourism in Daba, which is the third biggest tourism exhibition in the world. And these travel agents, we wanted to expose them to what we have in terms of destinations and products. Um, after the exhibition itself, we also took them on a tour to, to Cape Town, to Johannesburg, to Pretoria, and also on a short safari. Because I know, you know, if I tell you, come to South Africa, you will say, you are paid to say that. That's your job <laughs> to do that. But if your neighbor tells you, you know, I've been to Cape Town, or I've been on a right. safari, and I had a very, very nice experience, you are going to believe him. Yes. So we want people to go and through their own experiences come mouth. back as ambassadors of South Africa. Uh, Mr. Ambassador, just maybe just to backtrack a little bit, a lot of people, when you say Africa, they expect to see all black people. And what we're seeing in the clips is a combination of both black and white people. In, in, it seems like in good harmony. So maybe you can tell us a little bit about the history of South Africa. You know, that is, that is uh, I think if you have until next week, Wednesday, then we can finish <laughs> this discussion. <laughs> give us the short version. <laughs> I'll, give you, I'll give you the abbreviated yeah. version. You know, South Africa is a country with a very, very long history. We have an area in South Africa called the Cradle of Humankind, where you can find um, fragments of bone and pottery and things of the original inhabitants that lived there thousands and thousands of years ago. There were the original inhabitants of South, South Africa were the Sun people. Uh, some people also referred to them as Bushmen. They were hunter-gatherers, nomadic people, and they were there when uh, tribes, black tribes from Central Africa moved down. And then, of course, the first European settlers were the, well, the first European, European settlers to arrive in South Africa were the Portuguese seafarers in the 1400s. The first Europeans to settle there were the Dutch in the 1650s. 
and I mean, you can see that I am a white person. My, <laughs> my ancestors are Dutch. My family arrived in South Africa in 1660. So that's 350 years ago. Wow. So I have no links at the moment with the Netherlands, except that my ancestors came from there. But today, people like me, we are that fully is South home. African. Yes. That's, that's my home, yes. Okay. So in, in, uh, in, in that sense, uh, there is a great deal of interactions between the white and the um, black population and it's working very well? It is at the moment, it is, it is working quite well. You must remember that South Africa had this history of apartheid, mm -hmm. you know, where people were discriminated against based on the color of their skin. And it was only in 1994 when South Africa had its first democratic elections and Mr. Nelson Mandela was elected the president of our country. So today, we have a situation where we have 11 official languages. Oh, 11? 11 wow. official languages, of which mine is one, Afrikaans, uh, Afrikaans language is one of them. But 11 official languages, and there is easy interaction today between the races of South Africa. I should mention, though, that you know a, a big part of our population also comes from this part of the world. Because when the Dutch were the colonizers of South Africa, they also controlled what is today Indonesia. And they brought a lot of uh, slaves at the time from uh, that was uh, from the Malay. Dutch East Indies. Uh, e exactly. The, the so there is a lot of people from Malay descent in South Africa even today. Since we're talking about relationships, sir, of course we would like to find out um, when the relationship between Philippines and South Africa began. Before 1994, we had no relations with the Philippines. There were no formal diplomatic ties between the two countries because the Philippines uh, respected the request from those who were oppressed by apartheid not to have links with the apartheid government. So diplomatic relations were only established in 2000 and, uh, sorry, in 1994. Our embassy here in Manila only opened in 2006. So the relationship is fairly new. Um, and which means also that unlike many other countries where you have a long historic relationship, we had to build this relationship almost from the foundations up right. brick by brick. So these are fairly early days between South African, official South African and uh, Philippine uh, relations. Early days in terms of since relations 2006. between... Yeah. Since 2006. Since yeah. 2006, so early days, but we are... We are quite satisfied that at the moment we have laid the foundation, a good foundation f in terms of the bilateral relations, and that from here we can start building more quicker than what we had been able to do. Well, at this point we need to stop for a station break. When we return, we will still have South African...